think the main advantage is to make it cheaper to talk to people, connect to people that you don't necessarily have time to go to visit or drive to or meet and to create um, new forms of interaction and relationship with people much, much easier. So it lets us exchange ideas and knowledge much more cheaply than before. As, as we built up these networks of connection and networks of communication, which the internet, we also made it easier for people to spy on this and collect information, because now everything that we, we are typing into a computer can be taken, recorded. So it's good and it's also bad. Useful but also dangerous. Because if you have no privacy, if you can't think about maybe even dangerous subjects uh, privately, anonymously, then you have no freedom of speech. If what you say is a problem, if you are reporting on a corrupt politician or if you're reporting on a corrupt policeman or <coughs> something, and you have no ability to speak freely, then you have no political freedom anymore. And if you lose your political freedom, then the balance of power in a country will, will change. So it's very important that we keep the balance of power between different elements, and part of that is freedom of speech and privacy. The first step is to at least accept that there is a problem. I think if we accept that the loss of privacy is not normal and is not okay, that we shouldn't be expecting that all of our secrets are taken away, but that the state becomes more and more secret. Because the first thing is to have an understanding that this, this is bad. The second step is maybe to take te technical measures to bring back privacy, at least legislation, but also the way we use computers, we can move away from centralization more distributed computing, which is much harder to spy on. If you look today how we communicate, if I send you a photograph from my phone to your phone, then I will go across a 3G connection on some provider to some website like Facebook, and then you will download from the website. So my data is being copied many times by other people and given to you. But my phone can talk to your phone directly across Wi-Fi. It's possible. It takes some, some development still, but we can exchange information privately in this space very difficult to spy on that. So if you're a journalist and I'm giving you sensitive information, I can beam it to you, bum, bum, bum. you receive it, there's no ability to spy on that transaction. That's valuable. It's possible to recreate a private discussion in a, in a room, in an area, with people close by. That's one thing. Now how to connect groups together. It takes, of course, very strong security, which technically we can do. We can make very good end-to-end -end security. And we need some still anonymity so that when you have a message from this group to this group, you cannot see who it was sent to, who it was given to. So I think the problem is a very big problem to solve, but we start with, first of all, with groups, make private groups, and then connect private groups privately. Well, not the government, that's for sure. I mean, you have, it has to be built by, by a grassroots effort. It has to be open source so we can trust the code. It has to be made by experts in many fields but not, uh, not as a, as a uh, I would say, as an unofficial project of some kind. You know, we already have this example of, for example, official security standards, and we discover afterwards that they have backdoor, they have vulnerable to, to spying. So you can't trust official, um, you can't trust official security, you cannot trust closed source. It's a difficult problem. I see it as a big open source collaboration.